Hey kids, do you want to be real Vineland Rangers? This looks like a job for the Wasteland Superhero. On the fifth day of rage, Mr. Wasteland gave to me five blocks of foes. Yeah, I gotta get me a boat. Bitches love boats. Let's give it up again for Andrew W.K., the perfect song for Rage 2. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Tim Willits, and I am the studio director at id Software. And I'm Magnus Nedvors, game director at Avalanche Studios. Hi, everyone. <laughs> My name is Tim Willits, and I am the studio director at id Software. And I'm Magnus Nedvors, game director at Avalanche Studios. So when we first announced Rage 2 before the E3 showcase, we promised you over-the-top action set in a massive open world, thanks to our friends at Avalanche Studios. Oh. It talks. What a party with ruckus? It sings. Ruckus, ruckus, singing songs to da. It mounts on the wall. It's motion sensor activated. It's the ruckus, the crusher, talking head. And it can be yours if you order the Rage 2 Collector's Edition now. But that's not all. You can also get the Rage 2 Collector's Edition game. Sick poster. And it all comes in a one-of-a-kind steel book. It's the insanely cool Rage 2 Collector's Edition. Act now on this limited time offer, and it can be yours while they last. Rage 2 Collector's Edition. No assembly required, insane included. Consider Rage 2 for best performance. He's a wasteland superhero! He's a wasteland superhero! He's a wasteland superhero! Beep, 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 beep. Uh. Consider Rage 2 for best sound design. Hey kids, do you want to be real Vineland Rangers? Well, now you can with the Rage 2 Wing Stick. Powered by Nanocore technology, the Rage 2 Wing Stick really flies. And then you gotta go and get it. <coughs> With the Rage 2 Wing Stick available at GameStop, you can be a Vineland Ranger. Yeah! The Rage 2 Wing Stick is not really a weapon and can't protect you. Please stick responsibly. Consider Rage 2 for best post-post-apocalyptic Western game. Hi, my name's Andrew WK, and I enjoy partying right here on Bethesda on Twitch.
guys. Welcome to another very exciting Rage 2 live stream here from Boston, uh, Bethesda Game Days. I'm Jason Levy, Senior Community Manager for Rage 2. Uh, do we want to start on this side and do intros? Yeah, sure. I'm Billy Perry. I'm a video producer for Bethesda. My name is Carlos Geis, uh, Brand Manager on Rage 2. Ann Lewis. I'm a Content Manager at Bethesda. Uh, and I'm Tim Willits, uh, Studio Director at id Software. Awesome. We got Tim here. He's going to be helping us uh, talk about Rage 2. Uh, so in case you don't know, Rage 2 is the collaboration of id Software and Avalanche. Uh, so basically, Avalanche, the masters of open world uh, video games, and id, the godfathers of shooting. <laughs> Have to say it. Yes, <laughs> yes, the, the old guys. <laughs> um, so do you want to talk a little bit about Rage 2, what it's all about, just to set people up in case they're not so sure? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, a lot of people ask me, um, well, first of all, they ask me, uh, do I need to play Rage 1 in order to know what to do in Rage 2? No. You know, Rage 2 definitely is a game that stands on its own. Yep. And, uh, but um, for, uh, for all of you that may need a refresher in what happened at the end of Rage and what leads up to our story, I'll kind of go through, um, you know, the uh, Rage 1 up to Rage 2. Cool. Uh, so... Um, uh, at the end of Rage 1, uh, if you remember, you initiated the ARC recall um, uh, initiative. And the ARCs from the ground raised up, and we had some ecopods in space that came down. And that triggered uh, the authority wars, mm -hmm. where it was the resistance and people that were in the ARCs that fought against the authority, uh, and eventually you know, they, they won. And the authority was uh, driven underground and long forgotten. Uh, so in uh, Rage 2, you actually play as somebody different. You are not the person from the original Rage game. You can play as, you know, dude walker or female walker. And what happened to the person from the first game? Yeah, where's he? Yeah, where, what happened to him? <laughs> where's Nicholas Rain? You just have to, just, it's a secret. Okay. You know, we, we do throw out some, uh, uh, some hints. Uh, you know, one thing that's funny, though, is that because Nicholas Rain just, like, killed so many mutants, mm -hmm. they actually worship him as a, as kind of like a death god. Nice. So awesome. you can actually hear the mutants sometimes yell rain when you are attacking them, if you listen and carefully. That's, I mean, that's, him, yeah. that's kind of the, like the goal, isn't it? That Become is the goal, Become worshipped yes. as a death god <laughs> by a bunch of mutant yeah, cultists. Mutant god. Yeah. <laughs> yes, nice. yes. So in the beginning of the game, um, the first thing that you actually do when you start Rage 2 is you choose between... Um, playing as a female version of Walker or male version of Walker. We won't give away what happens to the Thank other, to the other person, person that you do not pick. Thank yeah. you. Um, but um, uh, right at the beginning of the game, you know, you live in this place called Vineland. And you are a wall rat. You, uh, you, you protect the, the city. And um, the start of the game, the authority attacks. Uh, it's a surprise attack. Most people believe that the authority was gone. Uh, and, but they, uh, they strike at your home and they kill or capture um, really everyone that you know and love. <laughs> so, uh, so it's your job as Walker to you know, leave the ruins of Vineland, yep. to go out into the wasteland and to avenge the uh, destruction of your home and um, you know, the, to avenge your loved ones. Sure. And we mentioned this yesterday, but again, that is that gift that you just showed is a lot of people's first look at General Cross. Because in the first game, he's just kind of a voice over some speakers. Like, you never see him. Yes, you know, and in Rage 2, we really tried to push General Cross uh, right to the front so you know who your bad guy is, you know what you need to do. And he shows up literally in the first scene of the game. So uh, we really pushed hard on that. So he is the, the, the boss, basically, that you're going to face at some point in this He is game, the right? boss yes. that you will face. And we have Very a, cool. I will tell you now, we have a really cool, epic battle yeah. that, you will, uh, that you will fight in. Spoilers. Awesome. Awesome. Spoiler, spoiler. spoiler. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but you leave, you leave uh, Vineland, and you head out into the wasteland, and you will see places that you may recognize, like Wellspring. Sure. Um, you'll also see a lot of new places. And one of the things that we really tried to do in Rage 2 is to make uh, a lot of variety to our environments. Mm -hmm. In Rage, um, it was very brown and uh, dusty and dry, but in Rage 2, we've added life. We have swamps and, and forests and a lot of, a lot of um, unique areas that give context to the game. And the reason for that, Tim, is because this is like 30 years after, so this is more post-post-apocalypse. Uh, civilization starting to rebuild itself. 
Exactly, yes. You know, the, the events of Rage 2 you know, take place 30 years later, and we wanted the world to evolve. Uh, and we wanted to show what the world looked like, you know, 30 years later. So, uh, so you set out from Vineland, and um, um, the story revolves around three kind of main characters. Um, we have the mad scientist from the original Dr. Kabasir. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the really tough mayor of Wellspring, uh, Lucem Hagar. My favorite. Yes. And uh, the resistance leader from the original game, uh, Captain John Marshall. My favorite. Your yes. Favorite. Yeah, he's awesome. He's he so is cool. awesome. Yeah, he's so cool. Uh, and it's these three people that you work with to uh, finally take down the authority. So along, um, uh, so like I mentioned in the beginning, the arcs, they, they came back from the ground, they fell from space, and it's in these arcs that contain the power-ups and the weapons that you will use to ultimately take down the authority. Uh, and as um, somebody that's very special, you have nanotrites in your body, mm -hmm. uh, you are able to open these arcs and to access the, uh, the powers and the weapons that you find in the arcs. Yeah, so Walker is the last ranger, sort of a violent, and as he gets out there to, to you know, explore, he's finding these arcs, and he's the only one that can really open them up and take the goodies inside. Yes, and, and, it's, and I really encourage players you know, not to rush through the story, um, but to take your time to find the arcs, because mm -hmm. that's where all the cool weapons are, all the cool abilities that we'll show today. Yep. You, will mm -hmm. un you will unlock those in these arcs. So take the time to find the arcs. Cool. Yes. And, uh, and as you build up your arsenal of cool weapons and cool abilities, uh, you fight you know, incredible enemies, you eventually will then take on the authority to finally answer the question of, um, of what has happened to the authority. Great. Awesome. Cool. So we probably want to kind of just jump into the game and, and see it all in action, right? Well, before we jump into the gameplay, yeah. do we want to do some giveaways? Yeah. Is anybody well, 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 just like the yesterday. Sound that they, they uh, throw me off every time. <laughs> Whenever we hear that noise, we're going to give some to stuff it. away to the people in you the audience. Uh, wing sticks, obviously from in the game. So I'm going to try not to <laughs> slice someone's head off. Uh, uh, oh, God. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh. Look out. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, I'm so I'm sorry. Open the wing sticks way. may not be the best idea. Okay, I. Uh, yeah, so maybe we can. Man, don't. That, that. Did you even throw sorry. it the way that you were trying to teach us I, to throw it? I did them? not throw it. The I was trying to be so careful. Way. I. Uh, <laughs> there's. There's no nothing careful way to say. hawk things at human beings. Man, <laughs> bad idea. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Especially these, which are designed to be weapons, yeah. even though these are soft and foamy. Yeah. They still yeah. hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do they still hurt? I don't know. Do they? I... Does this still hurt? Okay, I'm sorry. A little bit. A <laughs> little bit. <laughs> well, uh, well, actually, you know what? It is, it's public service announcement. Yep. Okay. It really is the way that you throw the wing stick. We've yeah, all been us. throwing it wrong. Yes, and we've that's all why we been throwing people. it wrong. Okay, so this is very important. All of you at home, make sure you pay attention. Yep. Okay, wing sticks are not thrown like this. Okay? You need to throw <laughs> wing sticks... Like this. Okay, let me show you. Here we go. <laughs> okay, okay, Ready? okay. Throw it like that, and then you wait, and then come back. Yay! Yeah. There you go. That's awesome. Uh, so obviously, <laughs> people that are here, you can get the wing sticks right over here just by playing the game, but they're also at GameStop as well. So if you do want to, you know, you're watching at home and you want to buy it, you can get it at GameStop. It's cool. Cool. Uh, you want to jump in the game? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we let's can do, do it. it. So, um... Obviously, there's a lot of action and rage, and it's very fast-paced. So what we want to do up front is kind of slow it down a little bit, give you guys an introduction to the new abilities and some of the weapons in the game. Um, so we're going to do this in a little bit of a hacky way. Perry's going to sit here. He's going to uh, spawn a couple enemies in. Um, we're doing this kind of showing you a little peek behind the curtain. So, uh, you know. Yeah, you can't typically spawn in your own uh, enemies when you're playing no, the game. No. We're, we're just going to have some fun this breaking the game a little fun. bit. Just do it. So we want to do, what do we want to do, uh, ground slam? Kind of showcase that. Let me hit them back first. Okay. But yeah, we can do a ground slam, the easiest and probably the best AOE sort of attack. You see they go flying. Does a lot of damage to mobs. Yes, it's kind of a crowd control power. Uh, and the higher up you are, the more damage you do. Then we can do the vortex, which is my favorite, which is... Kind of sucks them into this thing here, and then they go flying in the air. And you can shoot them, and then they'll also go flying. 
Man, another good one. We got Shatter. That will shatter them to pieces. <laughs> sure. It's <That's> my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um, and then we can do... Uh, show you another good defensive one. Go up against somebody with a rocket. Toss up a barrier, and then... It's the barrier, and you're good Total to go. Deflection. And then when you upgrade that, it kind of turns into an offensive weapon. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot of upgrades in this game, right, Tim? Like you can upgrade each ability, each weapon, yourself. Yeah, so, uh, so when you play through uh, Rage 2, if you notice that the enemies will drop these little blue crystals, that's Feltrite. So you collect the Feltrite, and you can spin that on upgrading um, your abilities like cooldown, effective range, damage. Uh, so and also all the weapons and items are upgradable, so there is really oh, a I deep path upgrade. to your upgrade tree uh, in the game. Awesome. And Press we it. just saw one of your favorite upgrades to the wing stick. Yes, the uh, grinding wing the stick. The grinding, which so, is just oh, that was devastating. The multiple, the multiple strike. Yeah, that's yes. good. Uh, so the wing stick again, you can straightforward or you can lock on. You can grind enemies, which I love, and then you can do the multiple oh, targets and deep. explosive. Very cool. Oh. You know, one of the things that we really tried to work into the combat, and it's the cornerstone of the abilities, is getting you, the player, into the action. You know, the, uh, the main list of abilities, as you can see, move you close into the fight. Uh, and that's very kind of id software style, getting, getting you into the action, that push forward combat that we love so much. But what's fun is that being able to do that push forward combat in the open world allows you to go up to a cliff and basically shove an enemy right off of it too. Right? <laughs> yes, which is so much yeah. fun. <laughs> Super satisfying. So those are some of the, the core abilities. Do we want to showcase some of the, uh, the new toys, the weapons? Yeah, sure. Um, so the AR is pretty versatile, self-explanatory. The shotgun, you know, obviously has a nice hip fire, classic shotgun, but this one also, if you aim down the sights, does kind of an energy wave type thing that sends them flying, breaks through their armor. Um, rocket launcher, really cool, you know. Nice explosions, but the cool thing about that is if you do some combos with it, so we can throw a vortex grenade down, and then it'll track while they're in the air. You can blow them up that way and sort of play with your, uh, play with your enemies like that. Um, then we have the one that's almost too fun to use, hard to put away sometimes, is the grab dart launcher. Fill them up with these gravity pellets, and then you can send them in the air. I love that gun so much. Are they going to be okay? Eh, uh, you know, we'll find out. <laughs> <No. laughs> okay. Very much not. I just was <laughs> curious. I didn't know. And going back to with the rocket launcher, you fill them up with some pellets again, then send them in the air. And then hit him with a rocket if it'll, if it'll uh, target him. So they went too high. That's how powerful it is. We'll do one more. Let's try single. So the more you tag them, basically, the higher up they go. Yeah. There we go. There oh. we go. Oh. <laughs> it's just overkill the game. Yeah. <laughs> do you have the uh, Firestorm revolver? Uh, yeah. So that one is also pretty good. So just by itself, we can uh, just show you what it does. So you hit him with these like explosive incendiary pellets, snap your fingers. The Thanos snap. And so you then really they, can uh, kill enemies in a snap, I guess. <laughs> it's yeah. <a> snap. <laughs> yeah. And the fun thing to do as well is if you combo the abilities and the weapons. So if we get another enemy in here, dumb goon, if we do something like put a vortex grenade down, then hit him with a few pellets. Then send him up, and then snap. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Blue and it was just like a, yeah. like a hard thud. I know. He's looking all right. Oh. So that's the fun thing. It's kind of figuring out the best combos with all the weapons and just seeing what you can do and really uh, playing with your food, so to speak. Yeah. Oh Some God. folks from chat want to know uh, what's the game <laughs> engine we're using, and it's actually the uh, Avalanche engine, correct? Yes, so, yes, yeah. this is the Avalanche Apex engine. Yep. Um, it's, uh, you know, they've been working on this, this technology for a while. It's powered some of their other games, and it really allows us to make a true open world game with no level loads between the first person action areas and your open world uh, exploration. Areas. Just go to all the biomes you want to, and yep. you know, no load. It's all seamless, and it looks so pretty. Yep. Yes. 
You know, and, and, and as you can see, like I said, we really wanted the game to look different from the original game. And this is a great location to showcase that. We have some unique vegetation. You know, we have the, the mist and the blue sky. And it, it has a raised look, but it's not, you know, 50 shades of brown. Yep. And a really nice day and night cycle, too. So as oh. you're driving through the wasteland, you're going to you know, encounter the different biomes with like nighttime and, you know, see. I love driving yeah. through the world at night, especially really nice. when you drive up to a place like Wellspring where it's just decked out in the neon signs yep. and it's just really, really pretty. Yeah. Or at sunset and everything just goes that beautiful sunset shade of pink and orange and oh, it's really nice. Yes, uh, sunset's definitely my favorite time as well. So I, I guess now that we kind of gave them a, a taste of the weapons and abilities, yeah. do we want to jump into kind of an outpost takedown? Yeah. 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 So let's put it all together basically and, and visit an outpost and see if we can take down some bad guys. So we'll go up here to Rash River, which um, it's pretty cool, pretty nice playground. How are you going to um, get there? We want to talk about the, the uh, diversity in vehicles, Tim? Uh, yeah, you know, so one of the things that we're really proud of in Rage 2 is, you know, of course we have the Phoenix, which is really cool. Uh, but as you see Perry go through our garage, you can see all the vehicles that you can spawn in. Now, the trick is you have to steal these vehicles and return them to one of the cities to unlock them in your garage. And we have tanks. Um, we have uh, monster trucks, which, are, which I love. Uh, we even have a hover boat. And I, and I think, um, I think, are you going to take the gyrocopter, the, our flying vehicle? Is that what you're going to use? Or? No, I th let's take the monster truck. The monster truck? Want to do yeah. monster truck? Yes. Yeah. Monster truck. Okay. We should know, I know we talked about this yesterday, but the uh, Phoenix is your vehicle and it's voiced by uh, Linda Carter. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. we had the, uh, the privilege yeah. of working with uh, uh, Miss Wonder Woman herself, uh, and she gave a lot of personality and flair to the Phoenix. Yeah. It just, it makes you form a relationship with your vehicle that yeah. I didn't think I'd ever have. Not since Knight I guess, Rider. I mean, now my car in real life has a name. It's not Linda, though. What is it? It's Jonathan. Oh, okay. My car's name is Jonathan. That's, That's cool. Convoy. I named him after Jonathan Goodwin. So. Oh. <laughs> not equipped to hit that. So Double you'll be driving car. around, and these convoys will come by, and if you want to engage with them, you can. Uh, yeah, really he was very smart to, uh, to sidestep <laughs> that convoy. <laughs> well, that would be embarrassing if you got taken. I did watch somebody try and take on a convoy with the monster truck earlier today at the demo stations, that's awesome. and I was like, that's, I mean, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> not not as uh, heavily weaponized as, uh, as your Phoenix is, for sure. Yeah. So as you saw when Perry drove by that little uh, gang of bandits there, so in the whole world, uh, all those encounters are dynamic. So you may run across a roadblock, you may run across a bandit tribe, or um, like, a, like a group of bandits, or maybe sorry, mutant tribe, or a group of bandits that will, will shoot at you. So the, if you have to always be careful. Racers, there are, a bunch of, there are a bunch of people who want to try and challenge you to races while you're yeah. out in the world. Yes. And, and the way that that system works is really interesting too. Yeah, you just, you just honk at them and a race starts and you can compete. And if you win the race, you win that vehicle. But all of the tracks are dynamically created based on where you are in the world. Yes. So you can start a race anywhere and it just creates the track instantly. That's really cool. So we're, uh, we're over um, in the, uh, uh, the River Hog area. Was this? River yes, Hog sorry. Area. The River Hog area. And, um, yeah, and you can tell that these bandits will fight differently than the Immortal Shrouded or the Goon Squad. Oh. Never gets old. <laughs> so hard to put away. What would you say the uh, River Hog style is? Uh, they Just like the bum rush, um, and they're heavily armored. Uh, except, like except, except when they're not, and they're like mostly naked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have really tough skin. But they do have those, those big, big guys with the shields yeah. and something that we're going to see in just a minute here, I think. So I'm not going to spoil it. Perry is so good at playing. I, I joke that if, we, if you buy the special, special edition, it, it comes with a Perry in the box. <laughs> yeah, we should note that like there are different... Uh, Difficulty settings Diff as yeah. well. Like you, yeah. you can really make this a challenge. Yeah. Um, but he's just exceptionally good at this game. This yeah, is not makes, what it looks like. Makes me life. feel bad <laughs> about myself. Yeah. Which is fun for me. <laughs> ah, now oh. we got the junk mech. Oh God. Uh oh. There it is. There it is. The redneck mech. 
Oh. Now with him, best thing to do is to avoid most of the fire. But he's kind of got these weak spots that you have to hit. So there is some strategy to it. Yeah, it's a lot of dodging. I mean, he does look like something that uh, a man with too, too much time and access to a junkyard might make. With, yeah, a, twisted, with so. a twisted sense of, uh, <laughs> yes. So he's using the, uh, the pulse uh, cannon now, which you have to regulate the rate of fire based on the temperature. So it's kind of this balance act by um, by keeping it right in the edge of overheating. You actually get the most damage. Do you have a favorite weapon? Yeah, I mean, well, the grab the grab gun is awesome. Yeah, uh, but uh, but I still love waster. the wing stick. I'm an old school okay. wing stick, uh, as you can tell by my yeah. wing stick I mean, skills in real life. In real life, you've worked to become a wing stick master. Yes. So that's impressive. <laughs> well. What about you, Jason? Do you have a favorite weapon? I don't know. Sometimes I feel like just the shotgun is just so, like that satisfying power of the shotgun. You shotgun. I love that. the alt fire shotgun, yeah. for the shotgun. It's great. Yeah, it's, it's really impressive. Um, I think mine's the Firestorm Revolver, though, and yeah. only because I love the drama of the snap. Yeah. It's very good. And that, uh, the Firestorm Revolver, is actually the most one of the more difficult weapons to find because it's in an arc that is in contested territory between the Immortal Shrouded and the Riverhawks. So you got to take out two bandit squads before you can even get into that arc. Which is not easy. Which is not easy, definitely. So for them, it's got to just be a territory squabble thing because neither of them can open the arc. They just want it because yep. the other one wants it. Exactly, yes. All right. They know it's valuable. Sure. Someone wanted to know if this is uh, exclusive uh, for PC is on, on the Bethesda launcher. Uh, it's also on Steam. Yeah, yes. it is on Steam. Yeah. Yep. It's on Steam. And, uh, on so, uh, so Perry here just unlocked um, an arc chest. Arc chests are like full-size arcs, and um, uh, they contain vehicle upgrades, weapon upgrades, and android upgrades. Okay. So definitely search around all the areas and look yeah. for those uh, arc chests. And I think you can even buy arc chest maps at certain vendors yes. in towns and just kind of around the world. Yes, yeah, if you're not if you're not good at finding them, you can buy a map. I mean, some of us need a little help. <laughs> <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about what you're doing right now? I love that upgrade. Because that wasn't so just yeah. a sprint. <laughs> right, that's rush. So that's really good if you want to get to point A to point B really fast or get through a bunch of enemies and uh, make sure they don't see you because you kind of go invisible. So there's a sprint and then there's that. So you kind of get this cloaking ability on and kind of hit like double he's time. It does kind of <laughs> look like he's driving a little invisible car. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. So we're going to go up the road a little bit. Yeah, let's try the uh, Abaddon Sanctum. Yeah. We're going to try a different vehicle out. That's a good idea. Let's do... Let's see. One of the tanks, maybe? We can do the tank. The goon tank is uh, my favorite. I like it more than the immor immortal shrouded tank. It's all the crazy stuff that they welded on. I really like their like base level vehicle with all the mannequins strapped to the top of it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. why not? Because why not? So are we heading to that arc, or are we heading to that outpost? The uh, Abaddon Sanctum. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm going to fight some mutants. I love this is the best place to take this. Do you like how he power slid in the, uh, the tank? Yeah, that's <laughs> skillful. <laughs> so it's going to always show you on the tank. road the best way to get there. Too thin. Uh, yeah. Even, even if it's through some Should have went with a bike. <laughs> Here's where Rush comes in handy. This area is is so beautiful. Uh-oh. There it goes. This way, here we go. Guess you want to talk a little bit about the uh, Abaddons and... Yeah, so the uh, Abaddon uh, mutants uh, have actually evolved from your kind of basic mutant in the original Rage. Um, so they're a little smarter. 
uh, we actually have some lore, some fiction around, you know, their um, uh, the, their genesis, and uh, you know that they worship Nicholas Rain as the death god. And this is really a great example of, you know, seamlessly moving out from driving tank in the wasteland into a very kind of id software style, yes. uh, uh, kind of for lack of a better word, word uh, corridor shooter. Mm -hmm. it definitely and, has um, like those Doom vibes. Yes. Yes. Yesterday, somebody asked if there were still going to be like underground areas of the game, and yes, there are. Right here. <laughs> and his overdrive. There you go. So, so Perry just went in overdrive. The faster you take out your enemies, uh, and the quicker that you pick up the Feltrai, your o that will recharge and uh, your overdrive meter. And once that's full, you can go in overdrive, which makes you more powerful, makes you move faster, gives you some health, and it makes your weapons more powerful. I don't know. Let's make this fun. We use the... Uh, you know, one of the things that I encourage people to do is, melt them like Perry bit. is doing, uh, use your abilities um, in combination together with your weapons and your items. That's really where the game shines. And that's when you can do amazing things like he's doing right now. <laughs> nice. Get out of my way for a second. <laughs> What is that big mutant? Yes, that's one of our big super mutants. He's got a uh, big uh, Gatling gun, and uh, you know he's always uh, uh, surrounded by other mutants that will rush you. So he'll lay down some heavy fire. He has some some heavy dude. Like, is he launching a bunch of grenades at you, or what was well, you know, it's a, it's like a Gatling gun. It's oh, a heavy okay. powered um, machine gun. And then of course, oh yeah, so he has a weapon core mod. The weapon core mods, along with the Feltrite, are critical to upgrading, of course, your weapons. You able to uh, use that weapon core mod, or are you fully upgraded and what's, on what's the And what's also uh, interesting is that remember how you talked about the three characters mod? that you work with? Uh, I think I'm so. Each out. of those characters, when you when you complete activities in the world, like you take out a mutant nest or a convoy, you will help one of those three characters, and through that help, you'll upgrade their progression tree. That's it. And this particular mission that he's on right now is actually a mission to find a ranger that went missing in the wasteland. And I don't think Ranger Baker made it, because I'm pretty sure that's his torso. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you found intel over him. Yeah, we core. found something. So there's a little and bit I left. think it's Baker's guts. Well, it took guts to go down <laughs> the tunnel, I guess. Right? Yeah, so and the tunnel took his guts. <laughs> so as you can see, this was a classier activity. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the left track. <laughs> Thanks for the left track. <laughs> and... Um, you know, once completing that activity, you earn points for Kavasir, and you saw where it says plus three project points. Yep. Well, you can take those project points, and you can go into your, um, your, your projects tab, and then um, you can upgrade specific uh, 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 upgrades or abilities based yeah, on actually, which character. That's yep. something that we didn't really get a chance to talk about yesterday. Perry, can we look through a couple of those upgrades really quick just yeah. to... Just to see between, you know, your project upgrades, mm -hmm. your weapon upgrades, your nanotrite upgrades. Like, there are a lot of different options. Yeah, and paths to go through. So yeah, so this is, this is a tree, uh, and as you, as you can see, uh, there's four tiers. And then once you unlock uh, projects on the, the preceding tier, it, it allows you access to the next one. Um, so if you're into, you want more items to carry or you want to, you know, reload faster, you can find kind of a tree that you can move down and sure. you can upgrade. Obviously, Lucem's tree is the one with uh, all the wing stick upgrades. Mm -hmm. right. Definitely. <laughs> Man, there's all kinds and it completely changes the game the more you get. Just like the wing stick thing, it's really cool to be able to hit three or four enemies with one or explode a whole group just with one. So it's fun to go hunting around for the pieces that you need to upgrade these things. Very cool.
So I think we have time to hit like one more. Uh, let's hit an arc. We've talked a little bit about oh, okay. that early on, but we you haven't really shown take it. just want to take the gyrocopter over there, maybe? Uh, We're not that far. This is the closest arc right here. We'll just go to that one. We can maybe take a different vehicle, though. Is it the Phoenix? What should we take? These are pretty cool. Your pick. You can choose Barry. Let, let's, just, let's just do the Devastator. OK. It's the uh, Immortal Shrouded, one of their vehicles. Pretty cool looking. We did talk about this a little bit yesterday when we were talking about some of the different factions. Obviously, the River Hogs are a little bit more ramshackle, a lot of like junk equipment, basically, stuff that they've kind of scrapped together. Uh, the Goon Hogs are just wild and crazy guys. <laughs> they are very um, eccentric, mm -hmm. uh, love their graffiti. The Immortal Shrouded are incredibly militaristic. They are. Well, they're shrouded. They never actually reveal their faces. They work out a lot. Um, and they have cloaking abilities, And too. they do have. They have super cool cloaking abilities, yep. and they can deflect your bullets with their swords. Yeah. So, obviously, they're the best faction. <laughs> and they're the toughest. If, yes. if it's early in the game and you happen to come, acro come across uh, an immortal shrouded yeah. base, and you don't have the upgrades, you may want to think twice about yeah. taking them out. Maybe maybe wait a little bit, mark it, put a pin in it, and come back later. Yeah. yeah. So as, as you can see, there's an arc here, uh, which, um, uh, which is kind of, there's a battle between some authority mutants. Um, so what you need to do is you need to clear out all the enemies before you can unlock that arc. Including that guy. Including the Cyber, <laughs> crush, cyber Crusher. Because he's a lot bigger than the rest of them. They seemed, you know, not too difficult, but... Yes, a good uh, rule of thumb is whenever you see a health meter, you know it's a, it's a, a, a tough boss, uh, battle. boss battle. Yeah. Also, good rule of thumb with this game, whenever you see something glowing and blue, maybe aim yeah, for that. Yeah, the weak points. <laughs> aim for that. They often glow. It's <laughs> a good tip. I mean, that's kind of one of the number one rules of games, always aim for the glowing weak points. <laughs> <laughs> that and shoot the uh, red barrels. Shoot the red shoot barrels. The red barrel. yeah. Always or shoot the red barrels. use your focus to blow them up with your mind. Yes, right. <laughs> that's true, too. <laughs> Let's see that. Oh, close. A few more. Uh, don't have any rockets left. That's not good. It's never good when you run out of rockets. <laughs> but hopefully... Oh, oh, oh. I'm good. Dash. I'm good. <laughs> Get a dash. <laughs> All right, let's get this one done. There's one side. All right, one more side left. Close. He's hurt me with that laser. Almost got him. So if he had, his overdrive meter is almost full. But if he, that was full, um, and as soon as Cyber Crusher goes into the weak state, hit overdrive, you know, you usually almost take out both of those and knock him off pretty quick. Nice. There we go. All right. Now, now almost. It's just, now it's just raw, raw damage. Now we got his, now we got his brain out. Gonna jump. There we got go. him. Nice. I will say though, for being such a big guy, he's very agile. Yeah. And he can jump real far. That's some authority uh, technology there. Nicely done. Kind of feel bad for him though. <laughs> <laughs> so once you clear out the area, you can actually open up the arc using focus. Yes. Yeah. I don't know that we want to spoil what exactly is in all of the arcs, though. So maybe we just yeah, leave well, it? Got a little bit of time. Yeah. Maybe we'll grab it. Yeah, okay. it's up to you. Show off the hyper cannon. Yeah, okay. Okay. sure.
Come on. There we go. There he goes. So yeah, as Tim mentioned, in all these arcs, you're going to find different weapons and abilities. So as you play the game, your, your arsenal becomes bigger and bigger. And, you know, learning how to master the combos of putting these things together is where the, uh, where the fun really happens in the wasteland. And every time you get something from one of these arcs, you go to one of these kind of tutorial areas right. where it'll teach you exactly how to use it and fun tricks for it. Like with the hyper cannon, where it just plows through multiple people. Exactly, all in one shot. So, funny story. The um, we were lucky enough to have our faces scanned uh, to be characters in the game. Yep. And our senior producer that works on the project with me uh, in at Bethesda, uh, he had his head scanned, and they've actually used him for all these guys here. <laughs> so there's like tearing them apart and all the. Uh, so every time rooms. you were mad at him, you just he went just into just a tutorial. Just, just going to a nice. tutorial. So He's that like, means why me? When people play the game, they actually should be looking for you, right? I have a small cameo, yes, my do. face. A small yeah. but glorious cameo. <laughs> it is memorable. It is if, very memorable. If you find him, you know what? If you find Tim in the wasteland, uh, hit hit up the Rage Twitter account yeah. with Let your us know. screen of him because he is special. Really something special. <laughs> You guys are bad. <laughs> hey, you you had to have signed off on it, so. <laughs> so I guess we can show it off in action a little bit, just like a new yeah. nest over here. Probably can show off the hyper cannon. Yeah, it's pretty devastating. It's actually one of the only like long range weapons in the game. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have no classic sniper right. rifle. Um, and because we really want to encourage you, like I said before, to get you into the action, because that's where it's the most fun. Uh, but of course, it would not be an id software game without some type of railgun-like uh, weapon. Sure. And uh, this one is definitely a, a ton of fun. But as you saw, we have to take out a cyber crusher in order to get it. Someone said there's no way he's playing with the controller. No, he really is. No, he really <laughs> is. He, he's that good. <laughs> he's that good. It's an elite controller. We Gotta can caveat with that. that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If it was, if it was me, it wouldn't look so <laughs> so good. But yeah, Harry's able to play super fast, and and it's incredible. It's a lot of practice. He's far he's far better than uh, us on the team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come back to the favor. I one of these. I do love the way the Abaddon mutants move and how they interact with their surroundings. Like that one that just jumped and crawled along the wall and then jumped out yeah, at like, you. Yeah, like fast spiders that are chasing after you. Well, now I hate them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and now he's overdriving the full too. <laughs> That's messed up. Here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, those poor little mutants. The Grab Dart Launcher does have a lot of super useful applications, though. Whether yep. you're launching, you know, explosive barrels into crowds of enemies or tossing them into the sky or tossing them into each other. Yep. Like, there, there are a lot, of, a lot of incredibly mean things that you can do with that gun. <laughs> yeah, it's not as how fast he had overdrive again? Yeah. Because he has the 10x multiplier. So the faster you take down your enemies, and the faster you pick up that belt drive, the faster that will charge. And it's you like can a keep loop. that loop yeah. going, yeah. And he got an upgrade. Cool. Well, yeah, I think we showed a lot of the game. I don't know if we want to spoil anything else. Um, <laughs> so we'll probably end this session right here, but. Uh, hopefully you guys got like a good peek at everything that we had to offer because it, it's an amazing display by Perry of uh, the combats and abilities and got to see some cool mutants and stuff. So yeah, it'll be good. <laughs> oh, no way. Way. I'm not throwing anything else because I'm going to hit someone uh, and it's, I, I'm going to get sued and that would be really I'll, I'll do, unfortunate I'll do for me. I'll do t-shirts because <laughs> I, I got to give you one because I hit you in the face. I'm so sorry before. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do one more over here. You were yawning. Oh god, I almost hit you in the face again. <laughs> All of the crashing sound effects are really freaking me out. Uh, we because actually, I just keep having this image in my head of the venue getting really mad at me. 
Uh, do, do we want to maybe uh, do this special guy now? Oh, yeah, we could yeah. do this, this special little uh, guy. So we have a really cool uh, custom controller here for Xbox. It's beautiful. Uh, and what we thought is just the first person to raise their hand to answer this question. It's a trivia. <laughs> So we hope you've been paying attention this whole yeah, time because it's related been, to something we talked about. Yeah. Uh, you want to ask it? Yeah. All right. I've got the question. So okay. am we, are we asking yeah. first? Yeah. Let's, let's watch hands. Really? All right. Ready? Who voices the phoenix? Actually, I saw him right there first. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Linda Carter. <laughs> John, no. That controller is there you go. awesome. Yes, that's it is. really cool. Congrats! Uh, so thank you guys again for watching and for watching all of our streams uh, for the last two days on Bethesda Game Days. Uh, we really appreciate it. And when does Rage Two come out? May fourteenth. May fourteenth. So not too that's long. It's like six weeks. So not too long. Get ready. On Get ready Xbox to rage. Xbox One, PlayStation Four, PC, yep. Steam, yep. Bethesda Net. You know it. Yes. Cool. And if thank you're you here today, much, go over there and try it out. It's fun. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Tonight marks the beginning of the cleansing. Tonight marks the rebirth of the authority. This looks like a job for the Wasteland superhero.